Okay, uh, in this video, we are going to tackle our fourth example of a vector identity problem that involves the Dell operator. Specifically, we want to prove this vector identity. When you're taking the triple or a double cross product of two vectors and then taking that cross product with the Dell operator, you're supposed to get this rather lengthy expression here. And let's look at this term here. Now, if you've watched our earlier videos, you know, of course, that that is nonsense. That has no meaning whatsoever. But what about this expression? Does that have meaning? And indeed it does. That's a perfectly valid expression. And again, if you've watched our earlier introductory videos, we've already dealt with this. We just wanted to point that out to you that here's where we're encountering this expression, here and here. And indeed, it is a valid expression. And again, we dealt with this in our introductory video when we considered the divergence of vectors, with the, of course, with the... Uh, by taking the dot product with the del operator. And also, in our exa earlier examples on vector identity problems, especially example one and example two, you know that it's our strategy to take our original operation and break it up into two operations like this. that this is equal to del cross f cross g only now the del operator is operating only on the vector f and then we have plus del cross f cross g where del is operating now only on vector g. And again, we didn't really derive this, but we showed that this indeed is a valid expression and is a valid approach in our example 1 and example 2 vector identities. We went through it in some detail. It wasn't a formal proof, but it was enough to convince us that yes, indeed, this is a correct approach, and it's an approach that can save us a lot of work. So, we're looking at this expression now, and we're asking ourselves, what exactly does this mean? Here we're taking f cross g, so we're generating another vector that's perpendicular to these two, and we're going to get the cross product of that with the del operator, but the del operator can operate only on vector f. So it can't operate on this cross product vector, this third one that we'd be producing from the cross product. Same thing here. So, are these just nonsense? Do they have no meaning? To answer that question, we have to invoke a vector identity that you have learned earlier in calculus. That's the back cab relationship. And it goes like this. Here we're taking the cross product of the cross product and that's equal to vector b times a dot c minus vector c times a dot b. And this you should remember from the earlier calculus courses. Um, We will be using it throughout as we learn to more topics of vector analysis. And in fact, we're going to apply it right here. Suppose that, let's look at this. We have del operator operating only on vector f, and we have this expression. Well, if we use the back cab identity with this, 
So that would be equivalent to A, that's equivalent to B, and that's equivalent to C, then that would come out to be equal to F times del dot G minus G times del dot F. Now, that's not quite exactly what this is equal to because here we're saying the del operator is supposed to be operating only on vector F. Well, it is here, but it isn't here. This is a dot product, so what we do then in this case is we write it like this. This is equal to, switch these around, this dot del. Then we move the vector f over to here. And now we have. So this is then the double cross product of the vectors f and g taken with the del operator so that the del operator operates only on vector f. And that's what this part is right here. Now that we have to consider what about this expression. So here we have del g cross the vector f cross the vector g. So now we're saying, all right, we have this cross product here. And we get the cross part of that with vector with our del operator. The del operator can operate only on the g vector. It doesn't operate on the on vector l. So again, we use our back cab relationship and we write this out. This comes out to be this expression. We have l times del dot g. And here, the del operator is operating only on vector g. Then it comes out being equal to minus g times del dot f. And here, then, we reverse this order. So we have minus f dot del. And instead of writing the g vector here, you write it over here like this. Now, I should clarify this. So we're saying yes, when we write it like this, which is perfectly valid, these terms here, here the del operator is operating on vector g. Likewise here, but it's not operating directly on v. Remember what this expression looks like here. Uh, maybe we should just remind ourselves. Here we have vector f, say it has components like this, f1i plus f2j plus f sub 3k. And we're going to take the dot product of this with the del operator. So this is the partial with respect to x times i, plus the partial with respect to y times j, plus the partial with respect to z times k. We take this dot product, we're going to have f1, i dot i is 1, so we're going to have f1, the partial with respect to x, plus f2, the partial with respect to y, plus s of 3, k dot k, s of 3 times the partial with respect to z. And the partial of what with respect to x, y, and z? The partial of vector g. And that is a valid expression. We covered that in earlier videos. So what we're trying to show here is that this is not a valid expression. That's nonsense. But 
this, which is the equivalent of this, that is a valid expression. So what are we doing? We're taking the partial of vector g with respect to x, with respect to y, with respect to z, and of course these terms come from the del operator. So the del operator in this sense right here is taking derivatives only of vector g. So we can say that the del operator is operating only on vector g. If this is not operating on it directly, as if we would written it like this. So putting all this together then, Going back up to here, we broke this up into its two components here and here, then this that gave us this component here and this that gave us this component right here. So if we can consider one, two, three, four terms here, and let's look at our original expression. We're supposed to show that this identity is true, taking this double cross product here. We have g dot del f, that's this, minus g del dot f, that's this term, plus f del dot g, that's from here, minus f dot del g, that's from here. So indeed, we have shown that that is a true vector identity. And again, the strategy is, right from the beginning, breaking it up into these two components, and we explain the thought process behind the strategy in our uh, example one and example two vector identities. In order then to show what this means and what does this mean, here then we had to use this vector identity for the double vector cross product. Once we did that, then we could determine what this means and what this means. So that's the strategies that are involved here in solving these vector identity problems. And we have a couple of more, so come back, join us for some other videos, and we'll try and tackle some more problems. And again, uh, there's hundreds of problem-solving videos at digitaluniversity.org. And if there's more examples that you'd like to see worked out or whatever might help you with your coursework, let us know with your comments and responses. Also, at the uh, website, there are free reports that uh, might be of help to you also. Okay, that's it for this video. Come back and join us for some more videos, and we're going to try and tackle some more vector identities.